Hi guys, I'm Shmi, and today you join me exploring the beautiful British countryside to take a look at a car that might not necessarily be right now in its natural habitat, but this is a car I have always really rather liked, and today I'm going to get to know a little bit more about it, showing you around it and taking it for a first drive, because of course this is the Rolls-Royce Wraith black badge the black badge being the more powerful in fact the most powerful model that rolls-royce have ever made now they don't position this as a supercar they don't position it necessarily as being a sports car but what this is is a two and a half ton three hundred and twenty thousand pound floating piece of automotive luxuriousness and we're gonna go and have a quick look around it right now and talk all about it and I'll let you know a little bit more about what exactly we're looking at and the first thing I'm going to do is just grab the key from my pocket which we have here which is a large nice solid item unlock it and the spirit of ecstasy rises out of the bonnet of course a traditional feature of Rolls Royces if I just lock the car again it will tuck itself back away. We rather want to see that, but one of the biggest differences now on the black badge is the removal of most of the chrome aspects of the paintwork and thick parts around the body. So the dark chrome spirit of ecstasy, the darkened front grille, new carbon fiber wheels, multi-layer carbon fiber composite wheels. This car has an optional gloss black window surround rather than the shiny silver you would normally see. It does retain the chromed around the rear lights, but it has the black across the rear above the number plate as well. And that's to give it a slightly more sporty image. When you see the car, it takes a typical Rolls Royce where their previous customers were an average age of about 55 and it caters more to the new buyer of Rolls Royces who has an average age of about 43 by offering them this new style and design and just wait by the way until you see on the inside of this now the car starts at about two hundred and seventy six thousand pounds so this car is quite nicely equipped as we're going to see when we take a proper look around it up here you have a 6.6 .6 litre twin turbocharged v12 and i think it would only be right to come around and show you that and of course the main thing with the doors is that they open backwards even in the four-seater coupe shape, the fastback shape that we'll talk more about as well. So just come down here quickly to open up the engine bay, which you do there. Come around and open the bonnet. There's a little lever here. And there we have the engine, 632 horsepower, 870 newton meters. So the regular Wraith has 800 newton meters. So we're 70 up in there. That's mated to an eight-speed automatic gearbox reconfigured for this car. It's got new setup to the air suspension as well to give it a little bit more turn in and aggression and that sportier drive for what is still very much luxury GT. That makes it quite a heavy car. It's 2,440 kilos, but that will get to 60 miles an hour, this car in 4.3 seconds on its way to a top speed of 155 where it is limited. Well, let's close that down, seen in the engine bay. Let's drop it and give it a click here in the center he says there we go and you've got that nice silver trim going up the center of the bonnet too and one other thing i'm going to point out on the ensign red paintwork if you can just see it is the black hand painted coach line that the car has all the way down the side of it and in fact if i come around to the other side you can actually see that a little bit better nicely discreet but still hand painted you can have a single coach line or a double coach line down the side of the car as you wish but let's come and actually take in the interior and feast your eyes at this luxuriousness. Everything is so soft and wonderful to touch. The carpets have this, I mean, they're literally deep pile carpets. They're just magical. The trim, if I take a seat in here, has this tactical weave carbon fiber. It's a unique finish that I've not seen elsewhere. Everything you can imagine pressing or moving, like the air vents, that's to open and close the air vents just feels lovely and beautifully finished. The iDrive controller for the screen system that comes up in here, it's magical. To drive, very little engagement. You don't have sport modes and that kind of thing. You have your gear stalk, your gear selector stalk, but you do have a low button that I'll talk about while driving to engage the gearbox into a more spirited fashion. But one major, major thing to show you in here, the headliner, the Starlight headliner. 
which is honestly incredible. Driving in here is just so luxurious. Seats fall forward, interesting thing to have the seat belts up at the top of the seats, but more than enough space in the rear. Here we've got the black leather with the Mugello red highlights, which really goes well with this color of the exterior. But honestly, inside this, and I'll show you more after the drive, is simply delightful. So wandering back around the outside, I've always, always had a soft spot for Rolls Royces, and I think the Wraith is awesome. The shape of it is the Fastback, like I said. It's two plus two, it's comfortable space-wise in the rear of this car. There's a decent amount of space around the back, and actually I'll pop open the boot as well just while we're back here. I think you can do with that button. There we go. Huge amount of space, so Grand Tourer, no problem. Even in here, you've got carpets in the boot that are quite nice. And I think you can close that back up with the key too. There we go. And shut it back down. Now this is of course a car from the Rolls-Royce press fleet. Very kind of them to allow me to be driving it at the moment and to be using it and ultimately to shoot this video. But let's come round and take a seat inside here. You just want to be so delicate with everything. Close the door with the buttons here, naturally. You also have your umbrella in there, by the way. Press the button, it pops out. It's so good that they still do that. Magical, magical touch. Click that in. And then, close the door. I love this. And it's so quiet in here. So let's start it up. One of the coolest things is having the power reserve. So 100 down to zero, the screen folded and opened. And another thing you didn't see was the head up display. So let me just turn it back off. Watch the head up display. Rolls Royce in Goodwood. I like that a lot before it shows you the speedometer with everything opening up and preparing itself. So it's a land of luxuriousness, like I said in this. Everything is a delight to touch, but we've got single track countryside roads, which is not necessarily where you want to be with a car that is 5.3 meters long and about two meters wide for the body. Um, let's go drive and see what it's like. Now what you're listening to in here is the peaceful oozing tranquility that is a Rolls Royce. You just sit back and relax and let the car effortlessly do its thing. And I know I'm driving along countryside lanes at 30 miles per hour right now, which is something you wouldn't normally ever see me doing. But this car makes you, initially when you get in it, drive it like a Rolls Royce. Just enjoy the luxuriousness. It has quite light steering given the weight of the car. The suspension is magnificent. The air ride system is wonderful. It feels so smooth. And then it's the sound the quietness, or rather the lack of sound, because there's so little road noise, there's no outside noise. You don't hear, or barely hear, the other cars that go right past you. And I'm just <laughs> enjoying the cruise, which is so unusual when you consider that this is a car with a twin turbocharged V12, with over 600 horsepower. But the cars go by, and other than seeing them, you wouldn't necessarily know. And you open up a window and you can hear a little bit of the engine noise. In fact, the car is slightly louder than a standard Ray. The black badge allows a little more sound to come out of it, but it's still very, very Rolls-Royce-like. And that is what I think the character of the car actually is. And, you know, myself, for example, I've always grown up looking at Rolls-Royces as the epitome of luxury, of this elegance of travel. And these cars, this is the sportier version than, say, a Ghost or the larger Phantom, say the new Phantom. But just driving this, you can put your foot down, it'll drop the gears, and then it will pick up and it will go. You know, 0 to 60 miles per hour in 4.3 seconds, it's 4.5 seconds to uh, 62 miles an hour, or 100 kilometers an hour, is a quick, quick car, especially when you take into consideration that weight. Now, going around countryside lanes, it has this remarkable ability with the suspension to keep the car completely flat. You turn into a corner, normally the car would obviously lean towards the outside, but this thing just stays flat as it rides around. And the black badge is aimed to have a new setup and configuration so that the front will have a little bit more turn in, a little bit more grip than it could otherwise have done. But you go down a small road like that, and other than worrying about the size of the thing, it's actually a pleasant driving experience in a completely different way to normal. As I pull out here, I'm actually going to press the low button here, which what that will do is hold the gear a little bit longer, 
make the shift points a little bit later and put my foot down. And you hear some of that noise as the car picks up speed and my word, for such a big thing, it does so remarkably. Now we've got the eight speed automatic uh, ZF gearbox. There are no flappy paddles. You can't change the gear manually. You only have the ability to press the throttle harder and it will do its downshifting thing automatic. There's no manual interaction or operation at all. You just go along. I can hear it's holding the power, or holding the gears a little bit lower. You have that power reserve, so go backwards from 100%, depending how much of your available power reserve you're actually using. But it did liven up a little bit. It's still very, very, very gentle. And Black Badge clearly sportier, sorry to overuse the word, than the normal car. But I really enjoyed driving the Wraith when I did for the first time. It came out about three years ago or so, and I went down to the factory in Goodwood and had a test drive on the local roads around there. And immediately driving this, it's that same sense of does it get better than this? Does anything get more pleasurable to drive in a gentle way? Than this car does it just makes you relax just by being sat in it you know you can have massaging seats and heated and ventilated seats and every single technical optional extra you could basically ever imagine is available for the car i can see it says i've got over 300 miles remaining on the tank which is quite impressive as well although no doubt it's quite a large fuel tank to go with that but i can't imagine another car that can do exactly what this does and just breaking in no doubt the brakes if you need to stamp on them are pretty impressive but you do notice the weight of the car and the momentum it's carrying now the steering wheel very thin border and quite a large wheel which has a bit of a traditional feel the indicator noise is very soft you notice very very soft everything is really emphasizing this peacefulness it's so nice though you just waft along it's something one day I need I need a Rolls Royce in my life one day, one day. Maybe I need to be slightly older than 30, although probably right in the, the catchment group demographic, almost 4 1. Normally I'd try and play you some engine noise and let you listen to what the car sounds like, but I don't necessarily think that would make for the most exciting bit of video clip. Just driving along in elegance and style and it's such a style and I actually think the configuration for this car with the red paintwork gives it even more character certainly for black badge and it may be called black badge but that symbol symbolizes the character rather than the, that you can only have it in black let's say you can have them in any color uh, you want you can have a white black badge should you wish and it creates such a magnificent machine for its purpose now don't go try taking this car to a track. I say that, but they took it at the Goodwood Festival of Speed hill climb last year, and it actually came fifth in the supercar uh, shootout, which was quite incredible. Um, but it's not a car that's built with track day ambitions to be taken to a Formula One circuit and thrown around. It's a more lively version of that Grand Tourer, that luxurious Grand Tourer. If you want a car to be chauffeured around it, you buy a Phantom maybe a ghost if you want to occasionally drive it yourself. The Wraith is about driving yourself, or the Dawn, uh, they're convertible. And the Black Badge, I think even more so, if you're a person interested in having that extra torque available and the extra the new looks, a lot of customers were doing that themselves. You can now have it straight from Rolls Royce. So it's a hard one to explain too much because it doesn't show its capability. You can probably see on the camera going around corners how it manages to retain stability and sits so flat. They're turning in, for example, the car doesn't tilt out, which you expect it to, given the whole weight of it. As we come down, actually, I'll go out of low and back into normal. I'm just cruising along at 30 miles an hour. You barely hear anything. I feel like I'm whispering at the camera. I genuinely feel like I'm whispering at you, and I'm quite sorry about that, but that's how the car makes you feel. I. Every time I've driven it so far, I get out of it and I'm just thinking, you know, oh, that was a nice, it's like you've been to a spa or you've been to, to relax. And actually, the amount of attention it's getting as well as something I've noticed that's quite surprising. A lot of heads have turned at the Rolls Royce, which is intriguing, just driving around the countryside and also in London. Ride over the bumps, you hear them, but you don't necessarily feel them. The one thing I would say about the steering is it does sort of catch you out sometimes. You have to give it quite a fair 
amount of steering input. And obviously being such a large wheel, you can find that you're being so relaxed that your arms don't do what they need to do and they get left behind on the wheel. But it has everything like adaptive cruise control, lane, uh, lane assist, head up display control, uh, night vision. You can turn on night vision on the central display. That's obviously not gonna help us much in the daytime right now, but in the evening. Oh, there we go. See the cars? That's so strange. You just let the car take you with it and roll onwards. Anyway, I could open a thesaurus and roll through so many different words and terms to describe the experience of this car, but I think the sound you've been listening to is probably the best in that it is so wonderfully gentle, yet, if you put your foot down, it gets moving. Case in point, you can feel the way it picks up, and it keeps going, it just carries that momentum forward. Turning in, like I said, it still feels like a big, heavy car, there's no denying or hiding that, but perhaps slightly less so than you expect it will be, given that it's 2,435, I think, kilos in total weight. So the only way to get it to drop gears is to obviously kick down, give the throttle a sharp stab. You'll drop to the lowest available gear. And then the torque, you just feel the torque pushing you backwards. It's quite a strange feeling, phenomenon. And you do get the sound, you can hear that V12. It's not crazy loud, it's not obnoxious. After all, it's a Rolls Royce and that's not gonna change. It's still gonna have its character, but it comes alive in the straight lines. You're not going to take it around a track. Enjoying it for what it is, for a, an epic Grand Tourer. Could you do any better? I'm not so sure that you could. Prior to today, I haven't really spent all that much time in Rolls Royces. I think the only two I've ever driven are both the regular Wraith and now the Black Badge as well. But I have spent a bit more time as a passenger. I did Gumball 3000, jumping between two ghosts, and I've been a couple of other times in Ghosts and Phantoms as well. But let's take a more detailed look around the interior. I've pulled over from my drive and take in all of the options and features and really what we're looking at. And like I said, everything you touch is lovely. All the leathers have a good, nice feel to them. The seats are supportive, super, super comfortable, whether it's in the front and in the rear as well. And you have continuation of the same finish quality with the different materials, the tactical weaved carbon fiber trim and all the metal surfaces and different bits and pieces looking around. You've got lovely speaker grills everywhere. The sound system in here completely covers the entire cabin. The Rolls-Royce clock on the dashboard sits very smartly there as well with the symbol underneath the infinity symbol you see underneath which represents the unlimited nature of black badge and the capabilities and possibilities of the car in the center of course you have the iDrive system so currently showing the 360 cameras how i've parked up just at the moment uh, just to go through this and that's all controlled through the central iDrive system here so back to the menu where you can scroll through your various different bits and pieces and settings all quite familiar everything you've got here and you can manually actually go to Spirit of Ecstasy and raise and lower that from inside the car. Should you wish. Perfect for your photo shoots and that kind of thing. And you can change the settings of an awful lot of things and different menus and, and the like. Then on the left side of that you've got the ability to raise and lower the ride height. So you can put the ride height down on the air suspension, just make it look a little bit sportier when it's down to the ground, or obviously a little bit more practical if you put it up the other way and takes a moment just to, to calibrate and update your 12 volt socket. But again, everything is nicely finished everywhere. And you can cover that and get a glimpse of the weave and likewise here. And then for the climate control, you don't have electronic screens. You have these very nice feeling toggles do the upper and lower sections and honestly they feel so good everything raising and lowering the, the uh, power of the, the climate just feels nice your heated seats your ventilated seats um, heated and ventilated simultaneously odd combination um, a CD slot your quick memory buttons it's all you know just super super nice and then your camera button hot press in to see the cameras on the front corners there. Electronic parking brake over in the central screen here in the center. Nice large 
uh, speedometer only shows up to 150 miles an hour temperatures to the right and that power reserve meter to the left and then a couple of digital displays down at the bottom but not too much it's not about overloading you with information and then over here you've got the hotkeys for the different safety systems and the like so the night vision head up display on and off lane uh, warning departure warning and then lane assistance if you come here you can actually see the cars that are parked opposite me on the night vision screen which is very cool then coming to the steering wheel like i mentioned very thin bezel large size steering wheel you've got cruise control buttons which are quite nicely integrated into here adaptive cruise control so altering your forwards and backwards distance speed up and down and then on the right hand side you've got some volume and telephone controls and the like all around and then just coming a little bit further past some more lovely speakers they're really very cold feeling right now but nice door handles and door mirror controls windows there's bits and bobs and then if we open up the door see the uh, wraith side sills but you've got various controls for the seats again all pretty self-explanatory down there oh i was just going to grab and close the door the memory buttons are there but obviously we're going to press the button why would you do it any other way in this car right absolutely no need ever then coming up top usual lights and different things and you've got the button here for the starlight headliner so you can turn that off don't know why you ever would it just it's so nice keep it on always especially at night and then um everything else more or less as we know it and just honestly super super luxurious and turn the engine off it gets a touch quieter but it doesn't make too much difference really because like i said it's just so quiet to begin with in here the whole car and that's what i like rolls royce make a car with sporty characteristics yet it's still so refined and so beautifully presented and finished now the only thing i've noticed driving the car which has taken me a little bit by surprise is that it does seem to get some negative response now that might be because i'm a young guy driving a very vibrant red rolls royce wraith um but it kind of took me by surprise i expected more I mean, there have been lots of thumbs ups, don't get me wrong, a lot actually, more than I would have expected, more people noticing a Rolls Royce than I thought actually would, especially going around the countryside. Um, but I think my conclusion is, it is literally the very best at what it's trying to do. And I have a mad craving to one day see one of these in the garage and experience a Rolls Royce properly, whether it's a Wraith or a Ghost or a future model, I'm not entirely sure but it's so elegant to drive, so peaceful, and you get out of it so refreshed. But I'm gonna wrap this one up for there. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Maybe I'll come back to you with a few more thoughts when I've driven the car a little bit longer, because I have it for a few days. But today, first proper drive in the Wraith Black Badge, and I've really rather enjoyed it. So I'll close this one there. Thanks again for watching. Make sure you're subscribed for plenty more, and I'll catch up with you again very soon. Cheers.